Good morning. It's 452. Check in markets this morning. Stuart Peterson's John Heinberg with us. Good morning, John. Good morning, Mac. Well, we got a turner, turnaround Tuesday behind us, and now it's report day. So what's happening with the markets overnight? I'll tell you, if you're up for volatility these last this, uh, three days this week, could be fairly interesting. Obviously, uh, markets overnight, we're reacting to some more Chinese news that really got that market tumbling yesterday as they devaluated their currency. Uh, and that really hit the commodity sector very hard, as well as the equities. And then we get another devaluation again last night. So we, we're coming off our lows here now. We have beans down well, almost 10 to 11 cents lower on the overnight. Again, as that Chinese currency continues to get weaker, uh, sends just shutters across the commodity market because obviously the world's largest consumer of commodities is the Chinese uh, government, uh, the Chinese nation. So, but with that, now I think we're starting to settle into the report. We got corn and corn and wheat at least getting back in positive territory. Beans at least five, six, seven cents off their lows. Well, hopefully, all of this will be behind us at 11 a.m. and we'll get a whole new set of fundamentals. What do you think is going to happen? What numbers are you going to look at, John? Well, the big numbers, obviously, everybody's concerned about is going to be whether it's going to be the yield adjustments if we get any. Now, uh, USDA is historically even known for taking baby steps and not moving real fast, so I don't expect. Uh, to see major adjustments there despite the, the wetness and concerns that we saw in the earlier part of the spring. Uh, and realistically, over the last month here, crop conditions have stabilized, and uh, that's going to probably keep it pretty difficult to move those yield numbers down. So then we've got to see if they do any real adjustments in terms of the acreage, uh, especially on the bean front, uh, seeing what happens there. There's still a good portion of this crop that was either not in or got in late. Uh, some of it was abandoned, uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they do in terms of those final harvested acre uh, estimates. And then obviously beans, where are we at in the supply picture? Uh, basis levels in the countryside suggest things are pretty tight, mm -hmm. and uh, so we'll have to see if they continue to make adjustments. Uh, one thing we've seen, obviously, is a lot of animals out there, and they're eating a lot of feed. Right on. All right, a lot of farmers in the combine this week up here. Say something good about the wheat market, or can you? <laughs> Well, about the best thing I got for wheat right now, other than you know the global supply picture is so heavy, it's going to keep any rallies in check. We're watching that dollar with this whole Asian currency situation. Uh, we're kind of turning into a bit of a trade war situation that could be arising here. Uh, dollar's trying to break some support levels this morning, and that's another reason I think the commodity markets in terms of the greens are coming around a little bit here. If they can break through those levels and get that dollar to weaken, that could just be encouraging to that wheat market. Uh, but it's just a situation where we're so oversold, and if we get some good rally in the other greens, we're bound to come with it. Excellent. All right. John Heinberg, Stuart Peterson, have a great day in Wisconsin, John. You too. Have a great, great day yourself. All right. Thank you. All right. Coming up next, a check of the forecast and a preview of what's coming up next on The Valley Today.